being joined now by Braden Galloway. If you can do us a favor, we're battling some ambient noise out here. If y'all can make sure that y'all are close to your microphones and try to speak up as best as possible when asking a question, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, but the line is open. You guys fire away with questions when you're ready. Hey, Braden, it's David Hood with TigerNet. Um, hey, are you guys as a group, are you excited about the talent that you have in this particular group and uh, excited about the opportunity for this year for the, for the tight ends to make more plays? Yeah, I think, you know, I think with, with Coach E obviously coming over, he's the one who's calling the play. So I do think we'll have, we'll have a little bit more of an opportunity. But I think the best thing about our, our group is that it's a bunch of selfless guys. Uh, we want everybody to be successful. Um, and, you know, if that's me making a play, Davis making a play, Jaylen making a play, um, really we're just, trying to, we're just trying to do our job to the best of our ability. And when, when other people are succeeding, we're happy for them. And I think that's the biggest thing in our group. Hey, Brandon, this is Trevor Groves from CUTigers.com. Uh, you look like you put on some good muscle in the offseason, particularly your lower body. Was that a big emphasis for you in the offseason? And, and what's your weight right now? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm playing at like 247. I weighed in at like 247 this morning. Um, and I was really just trying to get stronger overall. Obviously, there was an emphasis on my lower body. Um, but I, I think just overall body strength was, was something I was well, something I was really focused on during the offseason. Um, and, you know, during this break that we had, you know, in May, June and July, um, obviously, those are the biggest months. Um, a lot of it is uh, voluntary um, and just trying to trying to focus on things that I know make me a better player. Right. And this is Anna with Clemson 24 seven. I think Tony was talking about how he wants you to become committed consistently to the run blocking. How do you feel like you've developed in that aspect during camp? Um, I'm definitely growing. I'm definitely growing. That's definitely still still my, the weakness in my game. Um, and I'm not I'm not naive enough to, to think that it's not. Um, so it's something I'm you know I'm attacking every day. I'm trying to get better at this thing because um, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter how strong you are if, if your technique's terrible. You're not going to really be able to move anybody uh, or get your job done. Effectively. And that's that's the biggest thing for me. Just keep the craft of it um, and really just the art of how to strike how to and just use an effort throughout the play and finishing blocks and finishing play. Braden, this is Larry Williams with TigerIllustrated.com. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, just looking back to the scrimmage on Saturday, it sounds like the defense really controlled things. And I'm wondering when you're, as an offense, when you're going against a group that just returns just about everybody and, and is really – um, sort of coming into their own. How hard is it to evaluate where you are as an offense as you guys are sort of developing and kind of finding yourselves? Um, I think I think you see the maturity grow through camp. Um, but I think going against our defense is what is what makes us one of the best offenses in the country for every year. Um, nobody, it's very rare that you get to practice against what we get to practice against. So when they bring crazy blitzes, they bring crazy coverages and different formations and things like that you're going to get to the first game and it's not going to be anything that we haven't seen. Um, so they give us pretty much anything that any team can run in 15 games or throughout the course of the season, they give it to us in these two and a half weeks in camp. And I mean, not a lot of schools have that. So I think from that perspective, I think that's how you have to look at it. But as far as judging where we are, I think a lot of it is just evaluating the individual person and not necessarily the whole offense. Um, obviously all 11 guys have to be on the same page and, and, you know, and, and doing their job that way. But like you said, I mean, when they're bringing different things and they're and they're scheming the offense, and we're not we're kind of just installing our offense, not necessarily scheming the defense back. It it does get frustrating, but I think that frustration is what leads to the success that we have uh, whenever the season comes. Looking over at those guys, does it on defense? Does it feel like they're going to be different from what they were the last couple of years, and maybe kind of the feel? Kind of like back in 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 eighteen when you had this the, the the dominance on the defensive line. Does it feel that way again to you? Just just sort of being around them. Um, I honestly think we had a great defense last year, also in twenty nineteen. So, uh, but I, I do understand what you're saying with the with the defensive line. I think we had seven or eight guys that have started on the defensive line. Um, so obviously they're a very they're a very veteran group. Um, they bring it every day, and obviously you know we're going against those guys. They're making us better. Um, but there, there are a lot of similarities in the D-line between, you know, obviously this team and, and the 2018 team, just as far as um, the veteran guys at D-N. And obviously they're just super talented at D-tackle and they're uh, super deep. So I think that's probably the, the biggest, like, similar characteristic.
We'll take one or two more for Braden before we turn it over to Davis. Hey, Braden, it's Dana again. The offensive line sounds like they're still trying to figure out, quote, like they've been talking about the best five. So it sounds like they're kind of rotating different guys in and out of different positions. You knowing the offense and kind of obviously having a role in the run blocking, is there a way you can kind of help bring them along in that regard with your leadership? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing with the with the freshmen and the younger guys is just constantly giving them confidence, um, making calls, and then kind of explaining the calls once you make them. If they, you know, you know, some young guys they might not know what a certain call that we make is, um, or that you know we have to be on the same page as far as communication goes. So I think that's that's one of the biggest things. Whenever you, I think a young lineman gets here and they don't realize all the calls and all the communication that that has to happen between you know the guards, the centers, the tackles, and then obviously with us and the running back. Um, so everybody has to be on the same page. And, you know, as a young guy, I think a lot of guys are picking it up very fast. Um, but they're just they're learning the, the tempo and the game speed is just completely different, even in practice, um, you know, like compared to like skills and drills and, you know, even the spring. Um, so it's just a lot different. Um, it's a lot different mentality and a different mindset whenever you're getting out and you're going against Brian Brzee as a freshman and you're going against, you know, Miles Murphy, KJ X, all those guys. Um, it's different than especially when you're just coming from high school. And those, those guys have been here three, four years, uh, veteran guys, know what they're doing, know the calls, know the blitzes. Um, so I think, like you said, I think in the long run, that does nothing but make them better. But as far as the right now, I think it's just constantly giving them confidence because it's easy for them to get down on themselves when they're going against guys like that. Um, and I think that's just probably the biggest thing is instilling that confidence in those young guys. Hey, Take Braden, one more for Braden. Braden, did you get all the uh, the first team reps in the scrimmage on Saturday or did Davis and Jay Lay and some other guys get, rotate into? Me and Big Dave split them. Me and Big Dave, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so it was I would I would go first sometimes. Davis would go first sometimes. Uh, we kind of just four or four, depending on how you know how the series went. Um, so if it was a three and out, then obviously the guy with the next guy would start the next rack, um, and then and then we kind of just go go through there. Like I said, I think I think a lot of it is just how selfless the tight ends specifically are. Obviously, I'm not in other position rooms, but everybody wants everybody to, to be happy, to be successful, to make plays. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for me. I'm happy when Davis makes a play. I'm happy when Jay Lay gets out there and makes a play. Uh, and I think, you know, if we continue to do that, everything else will take care of itself. All right. We'll wrap Thanks, up, Braden. Davis is joining yes, sir, us appreciate momentarily. It. Thanks, Braden. Thank you. Hey, Davis. Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. Um, you had just 16 catches last year, but four of them went for touchdowns. And uh, over 15 yards per catch. What do you think the key was to uh, your efficiency last season? Um, All right, can everybody see me? I'll try to turn this yeah, volume up. Uh, another lesson learned, iPad just overheated, so let me get this on the tripod. All right, can everybody, can everybody hear Davis? If somebody can please uh, open your mic and let us know if you can hear us. Sounds yeah, good. We got you, Ross. Yep. All right, Davis, we'll let you take the answer from here. Yeah, um, I would say just I put in a lot of hard work uh, in the off season. Um, I remember during quarantine, you know, me and, me and Trevor lived right down the road from each other, so we would we'd meet up um, whenever we could and, and throw together. And so I think that helps. But really, I think just learn from everyone else in the tight end room. Um, you know, Braden's a great route runner and, and, and Jay Lay. Uh, you know, I'm really just learning from them and trying to take away anything I can from them uh, to, to help. And I think just the combination of those things uh, helped last year. Hey, Davis, it's David with TigerNet. Is, is Jay Lay the biggest tight end you've ever laid your eyes on? And <laughs> how much fun has it been to see his progression, you know, during the spring and the fall? Uh, I, I guess so. Uh, he's, a, he's a big guy for sure. Um, but just to see him 
uh, grow over the past few years has been great to see. Jaylee's a great guy, and he, and he's an even a better football player. Um, and you know, he's always always making everybody laugh in the tight end room um, and, and on the team. And you know, he's really put in the work this off season, um, and and it, it's starting to show. And he's held his own uh, in camp this year, and I'm excited to see uh, what he can do this year. Do you feel like you guys are getting to the point to where if Braden's on the field, you're on the field, Jaylee's on the field, whoever, there's just not a drop-off there? For sure. There, there's definitely not a drop-off. Um, you know, I think everyone in our, in our room can play. Um, you know, and we're all still learning. We're all still learning the little details to everything, which I think you do all the time. There's always something you can learn. Um, but it doesn't matter if doesn't matter who it is. Um, you know, I think whoever goes out there uh, can go out there and, and perform to the standard that, that Coach Jellett wants us to perform to. Davis is Trevor again. Um, it's been well documented, uh, the, the improvement of the offense, uh, much better and deeper than this time last year. Um, just what have your observations uh, been of the offensive line compared to this time last year? Uh, they're making great strides. Um, I think, you know, there's a bunch of leadership in that um, o line room. And, you know, and, and we have some young guys and, and they're learning the details still. Um, but, I mean, they can play. And we've got some we've got some ball players on the line. They're just some of them are figuring out the details. And, um, you know, that, that's part of it. But they're they're doing really good. They've made great improvement. Um, and and. There's nothing to worry about. I mean, a um, bunch of great guys in that room as well. Uh, they're all hard workers. They're all learning. I mean, they all meet. All of them meet. I remember in the summer, they all met after workouts. You know, they were going to the, the meeting rooms and and they were doing player-led meetings and they were trying to, you know, just watch them together and learn. Um, and I think that's showing right now in camp. Davis, Larry Williams from Tiger Illustrated here. Uh, from the scrimmage Saturday uh, and, and the offense as a whole, what part – you think is the most important that you guys, as you look back on it, that you need to improve on just as an offense? Just the details. Um, you know, we, we had opportunities. We made some plays, um, you know, um, but just the little details we could do better on, on some things. Um, and, uh, you know, that's part of it. It was our first scrimmage. Uh, and, you know, we got back to the drawing board today and, and yesterday. Um, but I, I'd probably say little details and just not hurting ourselves, you know, just having a good idea of the situation that we're in um, was, was probably the biggest thing. Hey, Davis, this is Todd Shaughnessy in Greenville. I'm just wondering um, what it's been like working closer with Coach Elliott, and what have you learned about him that maybe you didn't know before? Uh, it's been great working with him. Uh, you know, he, he brings a whole new – um, side of things that um, you know, I didn't know as a player, um, you know, more of the, the route running uh, side of it. Um, you know, he's, he's a very, very smart coach. Um, I guess one thing I didn't know about, he loves to cut up with us. He loves, he loves to cut up with us in the room and, and have fun with us. Um, and uh, he's, a, he's a funny guy. He thinks he's a funny guy. He's pretty funny, but he's not as funny as he thinks he is. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, he loves having fun with us and, and cutting up with us. We'll take one more for Davis before we go to Jalen. Davis, Braden mentioned that you guys had been sort of splitting first team reps, at least in the scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, just how do, what do you envision your role in this offense being this season? You know, what, wherever I can help, that's where I think my role is going to be. I mean, you know, I will do uh, whatever I need to do to, to help, you know, whether that's special teams or – you know, putting my hand in the ground and blocking, or if I got to
Hey, Davis, it's uh, Trevor again. I'll take it. Um, you're you're a Georgia boy. Um, how how excited are you about facing the Bulldogs in the opener? And uh, how much um, have have you been hearing about it from friends and family? Uh, I mean, yeah. Obviously, my dad played there, um, and I had a bunch of family go there. But you know, I can't I can't look at it as you know a game bigger than any other game. I got treated just like any other game. Um, you know, and, and when I was home, you know, there was people, you know, that would make comments about it. You know, they're all excited. You know, where I'm from, it's all Georgia country, really. But, um, you know, I can't look at it, you know, like it's bigger than any other game. I got to treat it just like another game. Um, and that's that's my mindset going into it. Thanks, Davis. Hey, Jalen, it's David Hogue with TigerNet. Um, you know, both Coach Elliott and Coach Sweeney have said if we could get Jalen to where he learns to love to block, he would be a great player. So how much time have you spent on that? And, you know, is it is it an easy process to try to learn to, to block? And what have you done to get better? Um, I sp spent a lot of time uh, work, just working on technique. Uh, I think that was my biggest issue is um, using technique to block. And because, uh, of course, I'm strong, but it's all about uh, using your fundamentals when you're blocking. So, um, oh, um, so yeah, that was my biggest uh, thing that I wanted to work on, just use my technique. Jalen, this is uh, John Blau with the Post and Courier in Charleston. Can you talk about your technique? What exactly is it? Is it your footwork? Is it just being too wide or is it leverage staying low or what types of stuff is it? Um, with blocking, it's, it's a lot of aspects with it. It's uh, footwork, technique, uh, your hands, uh, how you shoot your hands, um, your steps. Uh, you can overstride. Uh, um, going through these practices, uh, I've improved, but I can also get better because uh, I see myself always taking the overstride while um, blocking. But um, it's just those things, just shoot where you shoot your hands and how you step. Jalen, this is Larry Williams with TigerIllustrated.com. For the tight end group as a whole, does it feel like you guys are going to be more dynamic and diverse this year just as a position group? Oh, yes, because um, I feel that um, us as a tight end group will be more dyna uh, dynamic because we can do it all. Like I said, there's no drop-off uh, from whoever goes in to the last person to go in. So, um, yeah, I think we'll have a big effect. Uh, this year. Jalen, Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. Who do you think the uh, the toughest guy that you've had to block in practice or in the scrimmage has been? Um, I think the toughest guy, I'd say uh, Miles Murphy. Um, it's like he's long and it's like once he shoots his arms out, I got long arms too. It's like we're just standing there almost. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I say Miles. Really, uh, it's, you get a lot of good work with all the uh, defensive ends. So, um, yeah.